Glad you all could be here this morning. Welcome to NetScout on behalf of Middlesex 3 in the town of Westford. Happy to have you here this morning. We've got a very busy program because, as you can see, there's a lot happening in Westford. So glad you all are interested and willing to hear what's going on. I'd like to introduce Erin Kokinda from the Middlesex 3 Coalition, who's going to kick it off and then go through the agenda. And you'll see me again later. So thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Karen. That was impressive. No one ever gets my last name. I kind of miss my, uh, my, my unmarried name for that reason. But thank you, everyone, for coming. I appreciate seeing a lot of familiar faces today and you know, a lot of new faces as well. Um, Westford, as you know, is part of the nine communities of, of, of Middlesex 3 Coalition. But um, we haven't actually done a What's Happening meeting here, so it's nice to see some, some new people. So thank you very much. Um, I want to thank uh, Karen very much from NetScout for hosting us, um, having a presentation here, and then also providing us a tour after. So thank you very much. Um, I don't believe, I always like to say thanks to the Board of Directors from Middlesex 3, but I don't see anyone here today. Uh, I know Judy Burke is coming in, so uh, I just want to thank her. Oh, Lobby, okay. So just want to thank her for um, coming as well. Um, so uh, we have a um, busy agenda today. Um, there's a few other people I want to thank. Um, Jody Ross from the town of Westford for having us here, as well as everyone that's here from the Westford um, Economic Development Committee and the Westford Business Association. Um, I also want to thank Rick Green. Um, I know he came in. He's um, running for the US Congress in the 3rd Congressional District, so he's here. So thank you for coming, and um, so great. So here's the agenda. Um, kind of, I'm going to give you the rundown of the Middlesex Street Coalition, the things that we're working on, uh, upcoming events, and ways that maybe we could partner together moving forward um, in the future. So the Middlesex Street Coalition, if you don't know, if you're new, um, was incorporated in 2012 under the idea of working together, um, both uh, the municipalities and the business community. We could get more done for the region than working kind of in silos. So as you see here, the nine communities um, kind of start from all the way down in Burlington up to Tingsboro, as well as Tewksbury and Westford, who also um, are along the Route 3 corridor. Um, um, we have about 95 members now, which is really exciting um, when we started. It was really just the nine municipalities, or five municipalities now, the nine. And we've really grown um, quite a bit. So if you are new and interested about learning about the Middlesex Street Coalition, that is actually my job, membership coordinator. Come find me at the end. We can talk, maybe get some lunch or coffee after. But I want to thank you all the members um, that are actually in attendance today. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to come. Um, so we have a lot of great upcoming events. I'm sure if you're on our contact list, you get bombarded all the time with emails from me. Um, we do have our annual meeting, which is coming up May 22nd. Um, we're really excited. We have um, the uh, Secretary of Transportation, Stephanie Pollack, is presenting, which, as you know, transportation is a huge um, issue that we're trying to address for the municipalities and businesses. So that we're really excited that she's going to be able to come and talk about upcoming projects that are in the pipeline through MassDOT. Um, so hopefully you can come. If you need more information after, please uh, follow up with me and I'll make sure I get you in, um, registered. Also, a little, um, uh, at the end of the summer, we'll be hosting Jay Ash again. I don't know if um, some of you attended last year. We um, teamed up with the New England Real Estate Journal to do a real estate forum to kind of talk about um, trends and upcoming projects along the Route 3 corridor. So we will be doing that again. Um, so that's in August 1st, and if you're interested in attending as well, um, I can send you the information, but don't worry, if you get, if you get middle sex emails, you'll get plenty of information about this in the future. Um, we also have upcoming events, uh, another What's Happening on June 1st with the Town of Chelmsford and Comcast. Um, and also on June 20th, What's Happening in Middlesex uh, 3, Crosby Drive National Development down in Bedford. So um, please feel free to join us there. Um, and also, just to kind of highlight, you know, I think we've come a long way since 2012. Um, to be able to secure three secretaries over the course of six months, we're really excited about. We hosted a Top Places to Work at Middlesex Community College uh, at the end of March with um, Secretary of Labor Workforce Development, Rosalind Acosta. It was a wonderful turnout. It was a really um, exciting conversation and panel discussion about kind of workforce development initiatives, what companies are doing to and be on these top places to work lists on the Boston Globe. So um, it was a wonderful event. So I just wanted to highlight that. Um, just to kind of give you a rundown about the middle sex three, two, and what our target issues are. Um, the big thing for us is um, promoting and marketing Middlesex Street Corridor as a place to do business. 
the big thing that we've really taken on is um, improving regional transportation throughout the area. Um, as everyone knows, luckily today traffic wasn't too bad. Um, traffic and just transportation in general are a huge issue throughout the Commonwealth, um, but along the Route 3 corridor as well. Promote educational and uh, workforce resources and grants, so teaming up with our, um, you know, our different educational institutions to kind of make those connections between our business communities and uh, all the great um, educational institutions we have. Encourage real estate development, promote infrastructure, utility, and permitting improvements, and um, the big thing too is connecting business leaders to key contacts in the region. We kind of like to think of ourselves as the middleman to making those connections. A big reason um, that, you know, we're, we also have a Middlesex 3 TMA as part of the Middlesex 3 Coalition that came out of um, the Transportation Committee as, um, you know, the businesses were saying, were saying they were having a hard time attracting and retaining employees from the greater Boston area. So we currently have a shuttle that runs from Alewife every morning up to uh, five businesses along the Route 3 corridor. Um, and I also just want to call out, I know they'll be making a presentation, um, the people from Crosstown Connect. They've been a wonderful partner in kind of helping us get this, the TMA started. And also, you know, they just, we work with a lot of the same communities. I know they do the Crosstown Connect with Westford, um, but, you know, they've been a wonderful partner. So I just want to thank um, Doug Haley from Crosstown Connect, uh, Scott Sudeikis, and also Keith Bergman, the town administrator of Littleton, for really helping us getting this up, up and going. We wouldn't be as successful if it weren't, wasn't for your input and help. So thank you very much. And if you want to learn more about the TMA, I have pamphlets in the back if your business would be located. So that was a lot. Um, I just want to thank NetScout again for hosting us. And I appreciate everyone taking time out of their busy schedule to come. And um, thank you. So next, I'm going to introduce Jody Ross from the town of Westford to talk about um, things that are going on, what's happening in the town of Westford. So thank you. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, thank you for coming. And I apologize. I have a little allergy, so my throat's a little funny today. But, but thank you for coming. and. Um, I want to talk about Westford. It's my favorite topic. I've actually been here for almost 10 years. It'll be 10 years in August, which is kind of remarkable for town managers these days. I don't know, but Keith and, uh, and Paul and some of the others around here have done, done well, too. So that's a good thing. But it's a great town. Uh, there are a lot of things going on. We're very busy, and, um, and I just love every day. So uh, some of the things I'm going to talk about today is are the residential development, the commercial, our engineering and infrastructure, our conservation land, which is really important to us, and Neshoba um, Valley Technical High School had some exciting news, and what happened at our recent town meeting. So let's talk about residential development first. We have a lot going on, and there was kind of a lull for a few years, but things have stepped up. So I've got some of our subdivisions up here that are underway right now. A lot of exciting things, two Habitat for Humanity homes come, are being built. That's exciting. And I would encourage you to go look at any of these. This is at 75 Graniteville Road. And um, mill redevelopment, many of you have heard about the Abbott Mill. He uh, renovated years ago and put 100 apartments, approximately 125, I think. Now he's doing phase two, expanding that with 103 rental units. Wonderful reuse of these buildings. Uh, some other developments, 40Bs, uh, which of course is affordable housing kind of projects. Uh, a small project on Route um, 40. And then down here, you're going to have a lot of changes, as many of you know. There's going to be 180 new rental units put in and 240. So I'm told some of this is going right in this area. Big project and um, Westford, I don't even think had an apartment complex when I got here. And now we had Princeton Properties built, Abbott um, Mill, a couple of others. So this is really good for us because what we found is it's not only young people that rent these apartments, but actually the whole other end, people that are maybe in their 80s and don't want to have their home anymore will move into some of these. So there's a nice diverse population. Of course, with all these 40Bs, that's putting us in uh, over our subsidized housing index. Um, many of you know we have to achieve a 10%. This puts us over that. That doesn't. That kind of protects us from 40Bs that we're not interested in. Uh, but lots, lots of new things going on, and I've got a few here. 
Uh, the Merrill Quarry, I don't know if anybody's familiar with that. It's been featured in a few movies, like Animal House or whatever, where people have big parties. But he's trying to sell that property, and the town may or may not be interested. Uh, so I'm trying to communicate with him. We did receive a notice of intent to sell, but it was not a bona fide offer. So he, it went back to the seller. Uh, and this shows you our current subsidized housing index with all this would be 13.75. Commercial, a lot of exciting things too. Uh, many of you were at Juniper Networks about a month or so ago when we had an event. They're doing a $3 million expansion, or renovation, not expansion, I'm sorry. And it's, um, it's going to be wonderful, fantastic. Um, they recently donated some of their furniture to the town. I was trying to renovate a dispatch room and another story I needed furniture and I had no money and Juniper stepped up to the plate gave us beautiful tables and chairs and other furniture so thank you to them UTC is proposing a renovation expansion I'm not sure exactly where that is right now uh, but but that's maybe and hopefully in the works uh, Orchard Square we're still trying to find a restaurant for Orchard Square if any of you know of someone that wants to come in and there's still some space available there. Uh, the asphalt plant, which of course was very controversial for our town, it did get approved and it is under construction. My understanding is it will be built by next spring this time. And um, the, the Board of Selectmen is working with the abutters and residents on ways to mitigate any, any possible uh, ill effects, which we hope, of course, there won't be, but we'll be doing testing and monitoring and, and so on. The very fine building uh, was purchased and is being leased, and they do have a liquor license to put a restaurant out in front of that building. Bell's Bistro became Fuse. I ate there once. Has anybody else eaten there? Oh, few of you, yeah. I mean, it was pretty good. I haven't been back, so um, the escape room, I haven't, anybody been to the escape room? Oh, okay. I, I'm a little claustrophobic, so I haven't tried that yet. It's easy. But it's easy? Okay, well, maybe, maybe next Thanksgiving I'll bring my family. But, and then, of course, Kimball Farm completed their wastewater treatment plant. I'm not sure what their plans are right now, looped with their water supply with Littleton, and um, so they may be explain, expanding a bit. Engineering. So in Westford last summer, we were called the Big Dig, and everybody was mad because I had the whole town ripped up, and TEC probably had a lot to do with that. Uh, everywhere you tried to drive, I tore that up, and you had to turn around and find another route. But I promise I won't do that again. I just wanted to get some projects done. But we recently completed several projects, which I've listed. Uh, the Main Street reconstruction is finishing up. Tad Mc intersection. The lights finally got turned on. And um, we're, we've torn up Groton Road. We're putting in a light at Oak Hill and also a light at um, Dunstable, no, ting, wait a minute, Dunstable Road. So, and sidewalks and so on. So those are all underway <clears throat> in design. Uh, the Dunstable Road intersection, actually, I'm sorry, the, it's Oak Hill and Groton Road. Yeah, and Dunstable Road, okay. Uh, we're doing the Beaver Brook Bridge and Boston Road. We are designing that now to replace it from the common all the way down to you know Cornerstone area or the fire station. And we'll be putting a sidewalk all the way down and a bike lane, so it's gonna be a lot safer than it is. So what we all, uh, conservation land is very important to us here in Westford, and we did have a town meeting March 24th, and we actually did put a conservation restriction on 45 acres off of Hildreth, it was called the Salt Box Parcel, and um, beautiful piece of land there that we are protecting. And we also purchased 50 acres on Lowell Road and Providence Road. It's the Adams family parcel, and uh, that will be open space. There's beautiful trails there, uh, so we're working towards completing that deal. I went to Neshoba Valley Technical High School. Uh, the governor came. It was quite exciting. They opened a state-of-the-art engineering department. It was funded by a workforce skills grant. It was, it was awesome and um, very interesting uh, department. So we're trying to do public-private partnerships, and uh, many of you may have heard of the Millworks building. Many of you may have been there. It's a big sporting complex. They do have a liquor license, and they're going to be building a, a restaurant in there, too. Uh, it's got all sorts of things in there, basketball, badminton, soccer. I'm hearing uh, they're now doing spin classes and boxing. So really a great, great uh, new, new enterprise for our town. We, our rec department is currently 
leasing space there. However, we are uh, negotiating with TRCCI, which a few of the members are here, to move the rec department into the Rodenbush building when that rehab gets finished in December. So that, that's underway. 12 North Main, we, we did get a, a proposal from Chris Ewell to develop that, and I'm working with the property owners on whether I'm able to get it to a place that he'll move forward. He, we do have a purchase and sale with, the, with Chris Ewell. He's the guy that renovated those two mills, and um, he wants to turn 35 Town Farm Road, which is our, the town poor house, into uh, residential, so he's working on that. We have got some big municipal projects too. Our $12 million fire station is under budget and it is on schedule to be open October 31st. It's beautiful if you haven't seen it on Boston Road. Um, it's going to bring us right into the 21st century finally and um, five new bays, all our equipment will fit. We have three fire stations in town but this is obviously the largest one. We did complete a state-of-the-art combined dispatch center this year in the fall, and now all of our 911 calls go into this combined center. It's police and fire. They used to be separate, and you had to transfer the call depending on what it was. So we eliminated that. It's state-of-the-art equipment, and it's doing, doing very well. The Roanbush building I mentioned, we're doing a $7.5 million rehab. You can barely see the building. It's got scaffolding all over it. Um, I, I'm told there's some problem with the cupola now that we're going to have to figure out, but um, the rec department is looking at moving to the third floor, which is the middle picture in the, in the down, and there's more windows. It's very beautiful space, um, all wood. And we're proposing to build a new center building when we leave the current fire station. We will tear that building down, and we are proposed to two town meetings that have approved the design of a new center building. We're going to move our technology department there, which is in a little old fire station garage in, in um, Forge Village, and also our veterans is in the back of a school, a temporary kind of location, and we have a new facilities department we approved, so that'll all go in there, and then we're hoping to have a 100-person meeting room, because if you ever watch our selectmen meetings, which I don't because I'm there, but usually there's 30 to 40 people out in the hall that can't fit in, and um, we want to prepare for the next 50 years here, too. We did have our town meeting, as I mentioned. We approved the operating budget of just over 114 million, with capital just over 5 million. And these are some of the projects that we did approve. There was a citizen's petition, where there, where there were two. One was to put a traffic light in um, the common, that failed. And the other was to regulate the use of single-use plastic bags. So that's kind of like the market basket plastic bag you get. That did pass, so that will be implemented, uh, I believe it's January 1st, I believe. Where, where's Jeff? Yes. It's January 1st. Okay, Jeff uh, Stevens from our Board of Health, our health director, and actually Greg um, Johnson, who's my project procurement specialist, are sitting over there. So, Okay, so... Um, we're putting, putting a new roof on Abbott School, and we're putting in a new water system in the Vinebrook area, and we also, as I mentioned, created a facilities director position. We're not hiring till the fall. We will have a director and an office manager uh, because we have so many town facilities, and I oversee them, and obviously it's hard for me to take care of 126 buildings. So, Town meeting also approved these community preservation fund expenditures. Uh, lots of recreation. Pickleball is all the rage in town. Is anybody know what pickleball is? Yeah, this, the seniors love this. It's like a mini tennis with like a wiffle ball type thing and smaller paddles and they love it. They want courts all over town so we're working on that. We're finally replacing our Westford Academy track which I think people have been tripping running on it for several years now. So a couple other things I just wanted to mention is um, this town meeting we did also hire, or we're, we, we appropriated to hire two new firefighters and two new police officers. We've grown substantially, particularly business but residential too, and really I need to hire six more firefighters to get up to what will satisfy my needs over the next few years. So public safety is really important to us and the Board of Selectmen are supporting uh, me trying to up those numbers. Uh, 
Whole Foods and CVS, they talked about putting, having a facelift on that plaza. I've noticed they're, they're started. You have to walk under a little scaffolding, which is exciting. So that's supposed to bring it up to more of like the Whole Foods look, not the kind of ancient, kind of old, tired look it had before. We have talked about researching, again, a light there. I don't know whether TEC was involved in that, but where you come out of CVS and you take your life in your hands to try to get out, and I, I do it almost daily. Uh, I, we were told no light there, but um, it, it is dangerous. We've had 14 accidents there, and so we were looking at that. Uh, Guardrails or guide rails. I hear guardrails are really called guide rails, which I never knew, but those are those things like out there. So this is a big topic in town. Most people don't think about them, but usually they're galvanized. But we renovated Main Street and all of a sudden weathered steel got put up and they look like they're rusted and old. And so we're having a big debate on what kind of guide rails we want to do on Route 40 and so on. So that's kind of an interesting topic that um, has fallen in my lap. Two events coming up today actually is the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail opening for the Acton, the next leg, which I think goes down into the um, rotary of Route 2. I'm getting some nods. I'm actually going. It's at 3.30. I'm riding my bike. Anybody want to join me? I'm going with a selectman on our bikes. And um, that's very exciting, a culmination of many years of efforts and funding. And then uh, our strategic planning retreat, I don't know if any of you have gone to that, but every year the town holds a strategic planning retreat at Kimball Farm. It's free to residents, and we get about 300 people. It's June 21st to Thursday at 5.30 to 8. We talk about a couple of key topics in town. Uh, this year we're going to talk about school safety, so it'll be a joint discussion with our school superintendent and our um, police chief. And the second topic will be the new center building that we're proposing and designing. And so I encourage you to go that we always do what we call like science exhibits around the room, around the tent and each group, you know, AgCom, Agricultural Commission, Economic Development, whatever energy, they, they have a booth and you can learn about what they're up to. So really a great night, we feed you. Um, there is a cash bar and we give you an ice cream too. So it's a wonderful time to get together and have fun and um, talk. So that's all I have, unless there's any questions. I thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Tom Barry, chair of the Westford Economic Development Committee. Um, and uh, just b before I continue, I just wanted to uh, introduce a few other members of our committee that are here today. <clears throat> Excuse me. Bill Nussbaum is the uh, vice chair of the committee. Ron Caterino is the committee's um, IT expert. <laughs> uh, let's see. Christina Sacco is here uh, today as a member. Um, uh, Joan Bennett is here. Joan was just uh, jet has just joined as the representative from the Economic Development Committee to the Middlesex Three Coalition. So, th Joan, thank you for doing that. Uh, Patty Mason, uh, although not an official EDC member, she, is, uh, she attends all of our meetings as the uh, representative from the Westford Business Association. It, did I miss anyone? Anybody? And, and Jody Ross. <laughs> Jody Ross, uh, you saw how uh, energetic and enthusiastic Jody is in her presentation. Uh, she comes to everyone, she's a member of our committee, comes to every meeting, and is one of the most active members of the Economic Development Committee. We appreciate all the work you do, Judy. Thank you. So I, I'd like to show this slide and, and try to keep it somewhat updated. Uh, it, it, some of the numbers are very interesting. Uh, obviously, the total area doesn't change, but the population in 2016 was about 24,000. It was uh, 22,000 in 2010, and in 2000, it was roughly 21,000. I moved into Westford, uh, came back from the West Coast in 1983, and the population was 14,325, and there was a stop sign at Minot's Corner. Does anybody remember that? I lived on that side of town, and it was very easy to get through. Uh, uh, Paul uh, Starrett, I don't know if Paul is here today, has dramatically changed that intersection, and uh, fortunately, it's still fairly easy to get through. Uh, the labor force is uh, about 12,000 uh, people. 
The uh, unemployment in December of 2000, Westford was at 2.7% uh, uh, when the state was at 3.4 and national was at 4.8. Uh, residential tax rate, the, the, uh, we have a single tax rate in Westford. The residential is 1616 uh, and the commercial tax rate is 1638 but with a small um, uh, exemption uh, which bring, kind of brings it back to the single tax rate. Uh, median family income, 130000 in 2016. Median home price, uh, 2018, is $520,000, uh, 6 percent increase over 2017. And in 2012, that number was 389000 So we've had uh, an average annual increase of about 5 percent in Westford, which is extremely good. Uh, job growth has gone uh, up 4 percent. Um, and I wanted to point out that Westford consistently uh, makes the best of lists, best of um, education, school system, uh, best of places to live, that type of thing. Uh, every time I see that, uh, I'm, I'm proud to be from the town of Westford. Just very briefly, two business corridors, in case you don't know uh, about the town of Westford, uh, uh, State Route 110, which is right out here, uh, going east to west, in the, in the northern part of the town, uh, State Route 40, uh, which is developing rapidly. Um, average daily traffic count on Route 3 is approximately 100,000 uh, vehicles, which is uh, uh, one of the things that uh, at least small businesses uh, need to know. Uh, the Westford Economic Development Committee role, uh, we advise the Board of Selectmen on uh, various bylaws, policies, uh, regulations, so forth. We certainly encourage business investment and development. Uh, we try to build relationships and communications with the local businesses. Uh, we meet with a lot of the local businesses, um, work with a lot of the small businesses in town. Uh, we streamline permitting. Um, it's one of our main goals, which you'll see in a few minutes. And uh, we consider ourselves ambassadors for the community uh, for business recruiting purposes. And uh, we're a conduit between business and town government. The, the Board of Selectmen has recently appointed a, uh, a group of 12 members uh, to, uh, to tax classification study group. Uh, it's primarily uh, members of the of town government, um, the various committees in town and four residents at large. Uh, Ron Caterino actually uh, from the Economic Development Committee uh, and I uh, represent the EDC on that group. Uh, Ron along with uh, Tom Clay, one of our selectmen, um, uh, are the co-chairs of that group. We just got started about, what, maybe a month ago, Ron? And uh, so we're, we're doing a lot of studying, a lot of analyzing and uh, we'll get back to the selectmen uh, sometime in August or September with a recommendation. Um, we, we assess uh, permitting issues in town, uh, try constantly to improve efficiency as most other towns do. Uh, we, uh, we, we try to monitor inventory of uh, land and space. In Westford, there is not a lot of developable land left. Uh, we'll be using, I don't know, two or 300,000 square feet right around this area for the apartments that Jody mentioned. Um, so it's, a, uh, it's difficult. Uh, we try to keep track of what's available and uh, the, you know, as companies come into town to talk to us, uh, we talk about what's available both in uh, land, land space and office space. Um, regional connectivity, we interact with the, uh, obviously with the WBA, um, and Sarah will be talking to you in a couple of minutes. Crosstown Connect, the, uh, the Transit Authority, Middlesex 3, and the, uh, uh, the 495 Partnership. Uh, I mentioned uh, the, uh, the, the permitting guide uh, to improving um, the timeliness of issuing permits. Uh, one of the things that we've done um, a couple of years ago, it, we developed a permitting guide to doing business in Westford. It's primarily used by the smaller businesses. 
but it's a, it's a simple, I don't know, 18 to 20 page document that uh, these small businesses can follow. There's a flow chart that tells them exactly what they need to do depending on the type of business that, that they're trying to open. Um, the, the Westford uh, Business and Community Guide, uh, we put out the first uh, copy in two, 2014. Uh, it, it tells you an awful lot about Westford. Uh, it's great for employees moving into the area, residents moving into the area. So there's plenty of copies in the back. If you want to pick up a few to take with you, uh, we'll, be, um, we'll be looking at uh, updating this next year. And I did want to point out we had uh, seven businesses that sponsored the, uh, the development of this brochure. Uh, Kimball Farm, Red Hat, Westford Regency, Juniper, UTC Aerospace, Courier, and the Shoba Valley Ski Area. So we'll be doing that again next year. If you're interested in being one of the sponsors, uh, please just give me a call, send me an email. It's great publicity. Um, we established uh, Westford uh, several years back as an economic target area that allows uh, um, tax increment uh, financing. It also allows businesses to file for state rebates. Uh, and we worked and established the uh, Westford Business Association maybe, what, uh, four or five years ago? Uh, they're a very dynamic organization. If, if you're a business in town and you're looking to get involved, the WBA is a, is a great place, to, a great organization to join. Uh, a couple of years ago, we went through the Economic Development Self-Assessment Tool, which you may be familiar with. Uh, it was conducted by uh, Barry Bluestone, uh, who is the, was the director of the Northeastern University Dukakis Center. Uh, it's a survey of about 250 questions. It tells you, in the end, all of your strengths and weaknesses. Uh, we have a lot of strengths, there are a few weaknesses that we're working on, uh, some that, that cannot be resolved. Um, but we're currently working with uh, NEMCOG, uh, some of you may know Jay Donovan, uh, who's an assistant uh, director of NEMCOG. We're, look, we're studying the, uh, uh, the town in order to support future growth and in order to advance all those EDSAT recommendations that uh, came out of that study. Efficient permitting, uh, I mentioned briefly earlier, um, one of the main goals of the Economic Development Committee is to improve the timeliness of uh, permit approvals. Very critical to any business uh, trying to come into town. Time is money. If it takes them uh, uh, 10 months to, to get the proper permits, they've lost 10 months worth of revenue. Uh, so uh, we're looking to, uh, we have a, actually a very good record in the town of Westford. Um, Jeff uh, Morissette, who is the new, uh, newly appointed director of uh, land use management, uh, serves as a single point of contact for the town's land development boards. Uh, people tend to go into him first in town. He helps them through the permitting process. Uh, but the, uh, basically, the, the town boards are very experienced, knowledgeable staff, and uh, uh, they make the, the permitting process in Westford very efficient. Uh, other, some other EDC activities. Um, we like to work with uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, we've, we've gotten involved with um, the UMass Lowell Innovation Hub to assist new young businesses find affordable space. If you ever have a chance to go up and see that, uh, that Innovation Hub, it, it's very impressive. You've got brand new entrepreneurs, you know, one or two people in a, in a small office trying to develop a product. We're hoping that some of those people will, will come to Westford uh, and to build their business. Uh, Bill and I have also made a presentation to the Westford Job Seekers Group. It's another um, very energetic, enthusiastic group uh, that, trying to build their own businesses. Um, we're working with a couple of business-oriented realtors in Westford uh, to maintain a, a list of available office space, land, uh, and available sites on Route uh, 110, 40, and throughout town. Uh, right now, we're working with um, three different uh, small groups. Uh, 
we're looking for about 10,000 square, uh, 10, square foot office building to construct that, so we need the land. Small storefront for a retail bakery operation and a beauty, uh, one for a beauty parlor establishment. Just briefly, um, currently available inventory includes, uh, these are approximate numbers, about 177,000 square feet in Tech Park East. That's where um, Juniper is, Juniper, UTC Aerospace, and so forth. Uh, I think that is in about four different buildings, so we have that to lease. Uh, approximately 20, uh, 325,000 square feet of pre-permitted space in Tech Park West, which is this area. Uh, that may be a little bit high based on uh, what has recently gone, uh, been approved for this area. Uh, numerous office suites and storefronts available along the 110 area and uh, again uh, retail space uh, throughout town. Uh, one of the, we found one space in uh, Neb Nasset that we're working with two of those little groups that I mentioned that are a possibility uh, to put them in that space. And finally, uh, just some incentives to locate in Westford. Uh, I'm sure uh, most of you or many of you here are already in businesses in Westford. Uh, if you're ever contacted by other businesses looking to move, these are just some of the incentives. Uh, the, the exceptional school system, and we have made the list uh, numerous times of one of the best education uh, systems in, in the country. Um, economic target area. Available at a, uh, availability of the excellent skilled labor force, high quality technology infrastructure, some renowned uh, colleges and universities nearby, uh, the Westford Business Association with about 100 members, um, easy access to excellent medical centers uh, in Boston, Lowell, uh, and the, obviously the, uh, the airport up in Manchester uh, is one of the major assets for us. Um, that's all I have to say. Uh, if, if you have any questions, I'll be around after the presentations. And I sh it says it right there, westfordma.gov. If you want to find out more about the Economic Development Committee, its members, the charge from the Board of Selectmen, just go on to westfordma.gov, uh, click on Government, and then Economic Development Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. That's great. It seems like you guys have a lot of interesting and great things going on, and you sound like a very business-friendly community, which is really wonderful to hear. So now we are going to hear from um, Doug Haley at Crosstown Connect about their TMA and um, all the resources they have available. Great. Thanks. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank uh, NetScout for hosting this meeting. I also want to thank Stephanie Cronin from Middlesex 3 for inviting Crosstown Connect to uh, be here. They are a great partner. We're happy to work with them in any uh, chance we can get. And also thank you to the town of Westford and uh, Jody Ross uh, for being here and um, understanding what Crosstown Connect brings to the town of Westford. So the first question you might ask is, what is uh, Crosstown Connect? Well, about 10 years ago, a group of leaders in several of the area communities started getting together and talking to one another about what were the transportation deficits in this area and how to address them. Through that group, they eventually got a grant for the Community Innovative Challenge Grant, which allowed us to create an organization called Crosstown Connect, which is basically a transportation management association with the intent of addressing all the different transportation deficits we can um, find in this area. And this, in part of that, is the understanding that we have transportation routes uh, coming through this area, 495, Route 2, the Fitchburg Rail Line, and there are uh, a lot of different ways in which we need to address the way that people travel from those areas and get to the local business or get to their commuting routes in Boston. We also are, have been great uh, advocating for more resources within this area and having state legislation which addresses some of the issues that we have found. 
So who are our partners? Well, currently, Acton, Boxborough, Concord, Littleton, Maynard, Sudbury, and Westford are our partners at seven communities. In those seven communities, we have eight businesses that have also joined. Three of them within Westford, uh, Guterres uh, Company, Juniper Networks, uh, UTC Aerospace, two in Littleton, IBM in Potpourri, two in Acton, um, West Acton Village Works and AES, and one in Maine, in Mill and Maine. We hope to uh, increase that. Uh, but we also have partners that are statewide with MassDOT, MassRides, MassCommute, MAPC, LRTA, and MART. And together we create programs by working with the variety of partners that we have. So what services do we currently provide? Well, one of the main services we provide is dispatch services. And we had a group of communities that were uh, providing services to, through the council and aging to seniors. And what was happening is that there was a very ineffective way in which people could access dispatch. Each community only had two hours a day that they were dedicating to dispatch for seniors to call up and book a ride. Well, we had four communities, each with two hours. The answer was pretty simple. Why don't we put all those hours together? You have eight hours a day, you have more access, and people started booking rides in a greater capacity. And not only that, but they stopped canceling rides because people would overbook because they weren't sure they could get a dispatcher when they needed the ride. We also have been in the process of understanding and developing um, implementation of commuter shuttle services, and I'll talk about that uh, more later on. We've also been very successful in getting grant awards from MassDOT and from the state in regards to our programs. Right now, we're getting an annual about $150,000 a year in grants to offset some of the programs that we provide. We have the ability to assist businesses with their requirements to meet ride share. And we also provide emergency ride home programs for our partners. We have transportation events where we um, help with marketing and getting more people to understand the um, opportunities to uh, commute in a different way to their work. And we do surveying and data analysis of those employees, where they live, how they get to work, and try to have a better understanding as to how we can meet their needs in a more effective way. So why do we do it? Yeah, that's a, always a good question. Well, we want to provide uh, a variety of community options so that employers can find and retain the best top talent. Um, as you can see, I'm sort of retired, but still working. And my generation um, thought that having a car and commuting to work was a very important goal. My children, um, they want to live in the city and they want to have public transportation. And more often than not, they're looking for ways to get out to this area, and they're sort of stymied because there are no last mile connections from the train stations to the places of employment. So that's one of the key goals that we have. And through that, address that last mile and first mile. Within that, we recognize that the best way to do that is have people on the van in both directions. So we try to work with companies to have places for commuters to park at that business, pick them up there, bring them to the train station, pick up employees at the train station, and bring them back to the place of employment. That's the most effective way in having our money go the longest. Through this, we, we're looking to promote economic development in this area. We uh, believe that there's a lot of strengths in this area and that we want to see more companies move to this area. And we also want to work on reducing traffic congestion and pollution within this area. And I don't know about you, but when I travel in this area in the afternoon, sometimes I get very frustrated in the ability to actually move. And one of our goals is to reduce that congestion. And part of this is to help meet the environmental goals of the employers and the communities. So um, what has town, what has Crosstown Connect accomplished? Well, back in October of 2016, we, the um, 
uh, Maynard launched a shuttle going from Mill and Main in uh, Maynard up to the South Acton train station. And within that, we had several stops, some stops in Acton in housing complex and some stops in Maynard. And what we have found is that initially we were getting 10, 20 riders per week. Well, here we are in uh, 2018, we're getting over 150 riders per week. And we're getting a, a big mix. So for instance, last week we had a person within that housing complex recognize that they had a job at the paper store in Acton and they now use that shuttle to get to work each day. We have people that um, want to work at Mill and Main and if they live in this area, they can take that shuttle to get there. And on the other side of it, Mill and Main has dedicated some spaces for people, commuters, to take this shuttle and uh, come into the South Acton train station. And we have quite a few people from Stowe that are utilizing that. And now I'm going to introduce Scott Zadakis, who is our transportation um, director for Crosstown Connect. <clears throat> and he's going to go over a new exciting program we have uh, called the Littleton Shuttle. Hi, everybody. Um, so I get kind of the fun part. I get to tell you about the new uh, uh, service that we're starting up. Um, so this is kind of the route that uh, we're, we're going to be uh, starting. And I just kind of want to go into the background of how we got this to come together. Um, when I started at Crosstown Connect almost four years ago, we were looking at doing something like this. And it took a while to pull together the resources to do it. And um, uh, so we identified that we, the Littleton train station being where it is, um, kind of at the crossroads of 495 and Route 2, um, is, is a really good uh, resource um, for transportation, uh, public transportation particularly in this area. Um, and we wanted to make a connection to a lot of the businesses that are along uh, Route 110. Um, and Littleton was the obvious uh, station to choose. So uh, we identified, uh, you know, some businesses along Route 110 and um, they're, the stops that we're doing right now are going to be a pilot for one year. Um, there could be changes, but right now we're going to start at the Littleton train station. Uh, we're going to go to IBM um, in Littleton Common, and then we'll stop right around here uh, near Red Hat and uh, continue up to Tech Park East and Juniper UTC, um, which are both members as well of Crosstown Connect. Um, so we're really excited to get this started. Um, like I said, we, had, we really had to work, you know, think outside the box on this um, to make it uh, feasible for the towns and for the businesses and for Crosstown Connect to, I mean, running a shuttle isn't cheap. So um, we found a way to make it less expensive uh, by partnering with uh, MART. And, uh, which is the Montachusett Regional Transit Authority, and they will be operating this uh, system. And uh, so it will start at, in the morning. Uh, I can't, I don't have the schedule. Actually, I think it's on the next slide. So um, it will, we're doing two loops uh, in the morning and evening. Um, it actually is a pretty high level of service. Um, we were originally looking at one loop uh, but this will meet uh, several trains, both in the morning and evening, both inbound and outbound, because the uh, schedules do line up pretty well to do that. Um, so we'll be delivering people to businesses, and we're also going to, uh, we're in talks with um, Juniper Networks as well as IBM to see about park and rides. Um, we've had some positive um, interactions regarding park and rides for residents, um, you know, residents of, say, Westford that want to get into the city, uh, I guess your traditional commuters, and then as, as well as your reverse commuters or people coming in from um, out towards Fitchburg. Um, so that's kind of, uh, that's the schedule of it. Um, but I just wanted to also give a shout out to uh, the Devons Enterprise Commission and uh, Mass Development. Um, we wouldn't have been able to lower the costs enough to uh, afford this uh, particular route 
uh, if we hadn't partnered with them, they agreed to give us some space um, on in Devons to actually house the shuttles. So in uh, in transportation nerd talk, uh, deadheading is when you're driving without anybody in the vehicle. And for any of you familiar with Mart, they're located in Fitchburg. So uh, there was a lot of deadhead miles that they, we would have been putting on the shuttle, wasted gas, things like that. Um, so having the shuttles located closer here is, is really going to help a lot. And there's actually potential uh, for Mart to create a, a be even a, a little bit larger uh, depot there and serve some of the other communities around, like Harvard, Stowe, um, any, any of Mart's kind of eastern edge that, the, that they are, are farther away from. So uh, we're really excited to get it started. Um, our target date right now is June 4th, so we're really, um, it, it's coming. <laughs> so um, stay tuned to that. And, um, you know, it, I'd encourage anyone along the route to, you know, encourage their employees to try, try out the shuttle if, if it makes sense to them. And um, also we're looking uh, at having more business partners along that route. So if any of you are interested in learning more about uh, the shuttle and, and um, Crosstown Connect in general, please come and talk to me after, uh, after we're done here. Um, and this was just a slide that talks about um, our dues uh, structure that we have for Crosstown Connect. Our member businesses and towns each have um, formulas for for the the cost of uh, joining Crosstown Connect, having a seat on the board, um, input into the group. Uh, we're not you know we we do sh hard services like shuttles, but we're also a group that does a lot of thinking and problem solving. And it's it's uh we've got we've created you know a lot of access in this area that doesn't have a lot of public transportation, and we we've really grown that a lot and we want to continue to do that and we want to have as many voices around the table as possible so thank you and just before I go I just wanted to thank uh, Keith and Jody and um, the towns of Littleton and Westford for being partners on on the shuttle and helping it to um, become a reality thank you Scott and Doug we really appreciate it we've like I said we've learned a lot from you guys and we'll continue to learn a lot from you. Um, so next I want to introduce Sarah Fletcher from the Westford Business Association. Thanks. Good morning. I'm very happy to be here this morning. As Aaron said, my name is Sarah Fletcher. I am the current president of the Westford Business Association and I'm here to just share a few thoughts about our direction and what's going on with that organization. First I'd like to just recognize our other board members. So if you're on the board of the WBA, would you please stand up and be recognized? There's um, Patty and Marcy, Mar did Marcy leave? Or is she standing behind Stephanie, Wendy, Marcia? Thank you very much for all that you do, Karen. <clears throat> um, it's great to work with you all. I was born and raised in Westford, so I have seen this town grow up from the rural community of my childhood to the bustling suburb it is today. I've worked in nonprofits serving the community for over 18 years. And working in nonprofit has shown me the best of the business community. I've seen the generosity, the attentiveness, the contributions, and the perseverance from the businesses in the area and all that they do for the quality of life for everyone, the residents and commuters alike. <clears throat> I was the director of the, community, uh, the Chamber of Commerce for over 10 years in this area. And like me, you might have often asked yourself, you know, what's the value of joining? What's the value of membership? And I've wrestled with quantifying the return on investment of membership in civic organizations for many years. And here's what I have learned and what I've come to really understand and know about it. The value is in joining, it is in showing up, and it is in participating. When you join the WBA, you immediately get the value of belonging to the community. It establishes your business as a member of the town. There are many online tools like live links to your website, promotion of your events, member-to-member -member discounts, um, 
member spotlights on the um, website as well as on our monthly e-blast. We follow a well-established membership model. But when you show up, you also get free events, some free food, maybe a free drink every now and again. You might even get a new customer or client here and there. But you also get connected with your community in a powerful, much deeper way. So you get to know your town and the community members in ways you might not have known before. We hold four annual events, two catered social networking programs, and our annual meeting in November with a keynote speaker. And we have a very popular town managers meeting in March where we have a panel of town administrators coming from Westford and the surrounding communities talking about initiatives in the town and the area. We had four, four town managers at our last event in March and we had well over 80 attendees there. It was a very popular event. Thanks to sponsorships and a new grant from the Westwood Community Fund, we are developing three workshops this year. One that will uh, address the new tax law, one on marketing, and one on uh, social media. If you'd like to learn more about these programs, you can email me, you can go to our website. Um, our calendar is linked right on the home page. And if you'd like to join our mailing list, you can certainly just let me know. <coughs> You won't um, be earning any reward points, cash back, or frequent buyer advantages with us, but there are other ways to get involved with event promotion opportunities uh, and ways to engage with the membership. There's tabletop opportunities uh, to display your wares and annual events. Uh, present we need presenters and um, hosting uh, opportunities, hosting venues. But you know, the greatest value um, is when you actually participate consistently over time. That's when the WBA and really any membership organization becomes a referral source. You may not always associate a new client with the WBA because you forgot to ask how they got there or you attended our social media program and you just think your skills have really bumped up a notch. But you know, over time, the WBA will be a place where you know others and they will refer to you. Likewise, it becomes a, a source of sharing community contacts that you can trust with your family, friends, and associates. And you'll just know a guy or a gal. And you can confidently share that referral. And while that doesn't add up on your bottom line, it builds your value to them. And, but you won't necessarily put that on the bottom line of your return on investment. Um, it also becomes a source of professional contacts, B2B support for your business and organization. Uh, the more you participate, the deeper your connections become the WBA go, becomes a go-to resource of people you know, like, and trust for doing business locally. But wait, there's more. When you show up and participate over time, the value spreads in other unexpected ways. It becomes the source of a new friendship, or a ride to the doctor's office, or a job for your kid. The value of membership in the association is you. The reward is in every person in that organization. When you participate, the WBA becomes a source of personal and community connections, the value of which is countless. So feel free to reach out to me or any of the board members here today. Pick up a brochure or a business card in the back table and check out our website and join us on social media. Thank you for today's event. It's been a really good program here today. I'm very glad I was invited to participate. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. And uh, now I'm going to introduce Karen from NetScout to give us a rundown on the things they're working on and uh, get background on the business. All right. Thanks, everyone. So the biggest question we get at NetScout is, what do you do? <laughs> Anyone want to hazard a guess? Anyone have any ideas? So we say we're guardians of the connected world. Big statement, and we can back it up. And I've got a um, <coughs> video here that I'd like to show. We are all responsible for addressing the world's most challenging IT performance and security problems. As the guardians of the connected world, we need the deepest level of visibility and understanding of what is happening within the connections that power the world around us. 
As the leader in collecting, extracting, and analyzing packet data, NetScout provides that visibility and understanding. And with the power of NetScout smart data in their hands, Guardians have the power to enable the most meaningful connections of all. Behind every connection, there's a story unfolding. Every byte and bit of information, an opportunity. A transaction completed. A piece of knowledge gained. A life changed. NetScout provides the tools and resources for keeping people connected and data secure. The difference between gaining a competitive edge or getting left behind. Millions of connections affecting millions of stories every second of every day. The volume of data is so tremendous that making sense of it all becomes a truly daunting task. Digital transformation, cloud migration, and the threat of cyber attacks have our systems in constant flux. Performance suffers, information is lost, and the vital connections that people depend on begin to falter. We need to be smarter. At NetScout, we're helping guardians find the signal and the noise. We're going straight to the source to provide 360-degree visibility. We're monitoring service delivery and identifying application performance issues. We're delivering deeper insights faster. And we're getting information where it belongs to help people and ideas get where they need to be. As Guardians, it's our job to ensure stronger connections for a more connected world. Thanks to the power of smart data, we can do it faster and more effectively than ever before. Our future depends on it. The point is, when NetScout was founded over 30 years ago, the internet as we know it was not the internet as we know it. And it's since expanded. People, every single thing you do, we're all running around with our phones and tweeting and whatever. It's all online. And to keep it up and running is absolutely critical to businesses. So what we do is we assure and protect our connected world. We partner with the largest companies in the world, um, you'll see, I don't have names, but 90% of the Fortune 100 are customers of Netscout. If their business goes down, their CEO is gonna find out about it because everything runs over the network. And the worst thing you can say to an IT person is the network is slow. One, because it's a vague, annoying statement and they're like, okay, yeah. But the other part is, there's so many places to look. Is it your server? Is it something on the cloud? Maybe you ran an application upgrade overnight and something in the configuration is bogging it down and it's not getting through. Is it a cyber attack? I mean, you don't know. So all of a sudden you've got people running around with their hair on fire trying to find what the issue is. You've got another group of resources that are like, huh, gee, can't do my job because I can't get onto the network, so I'll just go to launch or take a walk. You're losing revenue if your transactions don't go through. You're putting yourself at risk financially, perhaps legally, if there's a data breach, and your reputation is on the line. So what NetScout offers is smart data. We work with our IT partners, our software and solutions, get them the right data fast to the systems and people who need it. So they're able to find problems faster, fix them faster, and in many cases, and most of the time, prevent the problem from even getting to the point where they get that phone call. So that's what we bring to the table. Um, as I said, we've been around for 30 years. 90% of the Fortune 100 customers in more than 120 countries, most of which are now in Dallas <laughs> at our big user conference that we have going on this weekend, which is why there was plenty of parking here for you all this morning. Um, 
And our customers are doing big things. We've got governments from around the world that use the company, um, healthcare systems. You don't want your system to go down when you're in healthcare. Banking transactions, all these things that are the lifeblood of how a business runs is protected by Netscout. So for this group, wanted to bring it down a little bit and tell you about some of the things that I know this uh, group may be interested in. So we've got approximately 450 people in Massachusetts and two offices. This is the worldwide headquarters of Netscout. Um, we also have an office in Burlington on Wheeler Road. We've got um, 330 people here. We can go up to approximately 500 that we can squeeze in. Uh, the top five towns represent 30% of the employees assigned to this building. So they're all coming from Westford, Chelmsford. Um, you'll see Lowell and Nashua are on both lists. So we're pulling people from both towns down there. We have talked um, with the Crosstown folks. I know, Scott, you were out last year. You met with our uh, real estate director and HR team. Boston isn't a pain point for us. Our pain point is 495. <laughs> you know, and when that backs up, it just floods into the town. And, you know, at the end of the day, when you're done being a guardian, you just want to get home. You know? <laughs> so that's what we struggle with, is the local commute. Um, and Burlington, same thing. Same towns, Lowell, Nashua, Dracut. And they've also got Bill Rick and Redding that they pull from. So we're very um, centralized, or, you know, to this area. Uh, we do have a big real estate project going on, but it's in Texas. This is our largest employee site. We've got more than 500 people located there. We're moving them from the city of Plano to the city of Allen. That's going to happen this summer. I see Stephen walked in. Yep. Um, and my colleague Mark is going to be spending some time down there, too, helping to get the labs in place. But this is situated in a really high-end um, mixed-use development with lots of um, amenities like restaurants. There's a big hotel and convention center going in. It's all within walking distance. As you can see, we got naming rights. So the name of the street is Guardian's Way. And um, I, in particular, are extremely jealous that they get a parking garage, and we don't. Because we have snow, they just have sunshine. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know why it's that important, but it's going to be a really beautiful building, and we're very excited about it. And like I said, I just saw Stephen Dobin just walked in. He's our director of real estate. He was down there yesterday, I believe. Yeah, so that's, that's what it looks like earlier this week, and that's what it's going to look like very shortly. And I also wanted to talk about our community service programs. We have a very active program that includes um, matching gifts, individual volunteer grants, team volunteer grants. It's very employee centric. Employees are the ones driving these activities and getting out and getting connected in the community. And we do whatever we can to support them in that capacity. These are some of the Westford projects that we've done. We're working on the Habitat for Humanity build that Jody mentioned. We had a group last summer at the Westford Academy helping to put in a greenhouse for their STEM programs. And we also have been mentoring the Storm Gears first robotics team for the last four years. And they just got back from Detroit with a whole bunch of awards. So we were happy to be a part of, part of that. So um, happy to talk about that when we get there. So we've got a tour lined up for those of you that can stay. We've got all kinds of fun facts and little um, secrets about the building here. I wouldn't call them secrets, but fun things that we can show you. And um, we're happy to take those around who can stay. And for those of you who couldn't, we appreciate you being here. Erin, I don't know if you wanted to wrap up or um, no, say anything. Or? Good job. OK. <laughs> Gee, thanks. <I'm> good. <laughs> So um, again, thank you all for being here. Glad to have you part of it. Glad you could find out what's happening in Westford. So thank you. Thank you.